Understanding data fetch patterns is crucial for developers who are involved in building real-time applications, web applications, or systems with dynamic data requirements. It helps the developers make informed decisions about the design and architecture of the systems. And we all know that a well-architected system contributes immensely to the user satisfaction and success of the application. Data communication between a client and a server can occur through various protocols and mechanisms, each serving its specific purpose. If you remember, in our previous video, we discussed various HTTP actions used for web communication and data transfer. If you have not yet watched that video, I strongly recommend you watch that video now. And in today's video, we will focus on data communication or data fetch mechanisms between a client and server using HTTP protocol. So let's dive in. Hello everyone, welcome to Tech and Career Bytes. I'm a software professional with more than 20 years of experience, including seven years in leadership roles at a global product-based organization. A data fetch, as you rightly guessed, is a process of retrieving a data or information from a source, typically a server or a database, and then bringing it to an application or client for further processing or display. In applications with high read throughput, such as Quora or Twitter, with millions of data fetch requests every second, the need for an effective communication structure becomes very crucial. Let's discuss our first data fetch pattern, data polling. With the data polling, the client repeatedly requests the server for updates or new information. There are two techniques in the data polling, long polling and short polling. In short polling, the client sends a request to the server at predefined intervals, usually less than a minute, asking for updates of the latest information. The server receives the request and processes it. If there is new information, the server responds to the client with the updated data. And if there is no new data, the server may respond with an empty message. The client repeats this process at regular intervals, regardless of whether there is new data or not. As you can see in the figure, even though the update is available, the client requests only at the specified interval, thereby delaying the data retrieval. Short polling works well when the information availability time frame is known well in advance so that the polling frequency can be set accurately. If the polling frequency is not accurate, then it has drawbacks like unnecessary requests to the server when the updates are not available or delayed data retrieval when the updates are available at the server but the client has not requested. Let's now discuss our second data polling technique, long polling. Long polling operates similar to short polling, but the client stays connected and waits for a response from the server until new updates are available or a timeout offers. This approach minimizes idle time, but it introduces connection management challenges. Clients may need to reconnect multiple times after timeouts to get new data. Using WebSockets is one another way of data communication between a client and a server. WebSocket is a persistent full duplex communication protocol running on a single TCP connection. The process of establishing a WebSocket connection often involves an initial HTTP handshake over TCP and then the connection is upgraded to the WebSocket protocol. WebSocket streams are more lightweight than the traditional HTTP request and they support full duplex communication, meaning both the client and the server can send messages to each other. WebSockets addresses the limitations of data polling techniques enabling real-time communication between the client and the server without the need for continuous polling. They are suitable for scenarios requiring low latency and high resource utilization. Let's compare the three approaches we just discussed. You can pause the video and think if this comparison makes sense based on what we learned so far. If there is anything you would like to discuss further, leave your thoughts in the comment section and I will get back to you. In today's video, we discussed data fetch or data retrieval patterns based on HTTP request and response. If you like this video, do check out our other videos. Also, don't forget to comment this video and subscribe to my channel. My name is Rupa and I thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next video.